Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. I want to talk about testosterone today. We spent a lot of time talking about the various ways in which the um, medical profession abuses women, but you know, equal opportunity abusers, they do the same thing to men too. So I want to talk about testosterone because it's an important topic and some recent research uh, has just come out that I think clarifies things even more in terms of what a bad idea testosterone replacement is for most men. All right, so let's start at the beginning. Testosterone is responsible for the development of male sex organs and also contributes to the growth of muscle and hair. It's a necessary hormone, and men who are truly deficient and have low testosterone levels can experience decreased muscle mass, lower libido, loss of body hair, and many other, it cascades into a whole host of health issues. Now, many years ago, researchers figured out how to synthesize testosterone. It was principally used to treat hypergonadism, a condition caused by either undescended testicles or pituitary tumors. Now, for people who had these conditions, they really did have low testosterone levels, and hormone replacement really did help them. But there are not enough of these types of patients to turn the drugs that the drug companies develop for this into billion dollar sellers. So you have to find a way to market testosterone replacement to everybody. And so that's what they did. Um, the basic claim was that as men age, they all have lower testosterone levels and eventually all of them requ require hormone replacement in order to remain young and vibrant and muscular and also to address all the conditions that happen as a result of low testosterone levels which include but are not limited to cardiovascular disease and diabetes and etc. Well, part of the claim is true. Testosterone levels really do go down as men age, but that's only about 1% per year after the age of 30. But testosterone levels are also lowered by conditions like obesity and, and diabetes. Weight gain in particular is a factor, and since most Americans are overweight, and this includes men, this has created a veritable gold mine for the companies that produce testosterone-related drugs, because far more men gain weight than have actual um, chronic endocrine disorders that result in uh, low T that require some type of treatment. Well, today you see a lot less advertising for low T. I had talked about this issue back in, I think, 2013 when um, the low T ads were on TV all the time. And uh, one of the reasons is there is a growing body of evidence showing that um, the reasons why, you know, the reason for low T is that men gain weight, develop diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and that lowers the testosterone levels. Um, and and um, it's not giving people supplements for testosterone won't help. The real answer is lifestyle change and diet change and weight loss. Um, also, the side effects of testosterone are concerning, and that started several years ago, and that's uh, cooled off the um, interest in, in testosterone replacement a little bit. And of course, I think a lot of the companies got in some trouble for making some of the claims that they did on television and uh, television ads and, and their websites. Well, the reason why I'm covering this again is the results of five new double-blind, randomized, and placebo-controlled trials were recently published and showed that testosterone replacement offers some minimal benefit, which is offset by some very significant side effects. The five studies are collectively referred to as the testosterone trials, and they were designed to compare the use of Android gel, a very popular testosterone drug, with placebo. The trials included 788 men who had below normal levels of testosterone. Now here, here's the good part. Taking testosterone did result in plasma levels which were considered normal for much younger men than those in the trials. Now I want to say something about that. I don't think the objective of healthcare is to try and take somebody who is older, I'm 60 for example, and make it so that I have the hormone levels of a 25 year old woman because I am not 25. That's part of why the side effects, which I'll tell you about in a minute, are so concerning. This is not something we should be doing. So this was reported as a benefit. I would disagree with that for the reasons I just stated. Another thing, men taking testosterone had increased bone density and bone strength. Uh, those who were anemic but there was no cause identified um, had increases in plasma levels of iron. But testosterone was ineffective for improving memory or cognitive function in men who claimed that they had memory problems at the beginning of the study. And here's the most important part. Testosterone appeared to increase the risk of cardiovascular disease with more arterial plaque development and those taking hormones versus those taking placebo. Most of the men had severe atherosclerosis at the beginning of the study and they got worse over the course of the year that they took testosterone. Of course, the better idea would have been to put them on a low-fat plant-based diet, but that wasn't part of the study. 
in an editorial in the same issue of the Journal of the American Medical Association where the research was published, Dr. David Handelsman said that the studies do not change the current unfavorable profile of safety and efficacy for testosterone replacement, adding that low testosterone levels due to obesity and other health, health issues, quote, are better addressed by lifestyle measures. Thank you so much, Dr. Handelsman. Love to see more and more people on this same page. He also advised that warnings regarding the cardiovascular risk associated with testosterone replacement should be strengthened on the product's label. Now, another doc at the University of Texas Medical School says that the problem is that while billions of dollars are spent on male hormones, quote, we just don't know the long-term risk of testosterone therapy at this time. We don't know the long-term risks associated with any drugs when they come out on the market. We do this grand experiment uh, where we prescribe things to, where, where doctors start prescribing things en masse to people after um, clinical trials that are short-term using you know, perfect patients to only have one thing wrong with them. And then over time, we get to hear about what the side effects are as they're reported. So anyway, some risk factors, however, are well known at this time. This idea that we need more research. I always think more research is a good idea, but there's a lot of stuff we do know right now. And I'll tell you what some of the risk factors are. I went to the website. I always think the best information you're going to get about drugs and the rosiest presentation of it is going to be the, part, the company that makes the product, right? So here's what uh, was listed on the company's website for Androgel. Uh, in addition to cardiovascular disease, nausea, vomiting, headache, dizziness, hair loss, trouble sleeping, changes in sexual desire, Desires. Redness, swelling, itching, burning, hardening of the skin where the patch is worn, change in skin color, breast swelling or tenderness, depression, sleep apnea, lower sperm count, and acne. Now, the really serious side effects include a congestive heart failure, heart attack, and prostate cancer. Great stuff, right? So that you have a little bit more bone strength and higher iron levels. My gosh, you can accomplish both of those things in much safer ways. Another issue that calls into the question, the $3.8 billion in prescriptions estimated to be written this year. This is a big business, this testosterone uh, replacement therapy, um, is the fact that testing for testosterone levels is such an imprecise science, which means that the test results are completely unreliable. Testosterone levels fluctuate from day to day and even hour to hour. Uh, some influences on test results include time of day the test is taken, how much sleep the man got the night before, mood, what was consumed at the last meal. Um, so that is definitely important. But according to an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association, 24% of the time, testosterone replacement is prescribed without any testing at all. I guess if the testing is unreliable, why not just make stuff up and give men testosterone replacement? Drug companies and enterprising doctors have developed entire websites dedicated to quote unquote educating men about low T. In most cases, this list of symptoms is so broad and vague that almost anybody qualifies with the diagnosis and this is becoming increasingly common. Um, almost anybody can qualify for adrenal fatigue, subclinical hypothyroidism, undiagnosable Lyme disease, heavy metal toxicity, quack diagnosis after quack diagnosis. Not that these things don't happen to anybody. That's not the point that I'm making. They are just, they are used to disease monger, to get healthy people sucked into the medical system. So this leads men, by the way, to visit doctors and to request hormone replacement, which is liberally prescribed, most often without testing. And here's the part that's really terrible. Um, serious signs of disease, like diabetes and, and um, uh, heart disease, are completely ignored, uh, which could be addressed with diet and lifestyle change. Instead, men are sent home with a prescription that will not help them and will probably hurt them. So hormone replacement therapy is marketed aggressively to both men and women who many of whom like the idea that taking a pill, wearing a patch, administering a topical cream can solve their weight and health problems or help them to look and feel younger. Now some people do notice some improvements, particularly with symptoms, but there is a pretty big price to pay, including increased risk of diseases like cancer. So the best fountain of youth is not hormone replacement. The best treatment for obesity and diabetes is not hormone replacement. It's diet and lifestyle change. It's safe, effective, no side effects. Well, actually, there are some side effects. I always tell people side effects for hanging out with me and doing what I do. I include things like sleeping better, losing weight, clear up your skin, hair gets nice and 
thick and, and uh, won't get curly, by the way, that's just me. Um, but um, a, a lot of energy, uh, 60 years old, not taking any drugs, um, the list goes on and on. I think those are pretty good side effects that most people would sign up for. But again, most people aren't given the option to sign up for these things because they are not given full disclosure. That is why here at Wellness Farm Health, we practice informed medical decision making. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.